Recovering from knee surgery is highly variable. It was going to take forever to get better if I was ever going to get better. There's got to be something out there besides a CPM machine, which and clearly isn't helping me. Active and aggressive with this thing, or I was going to. You know, I'm a guy that's not looking to relieve the pain. I'm a guy that's looking to get back in the game. That downtime was not what I wanted. We've spent the last seven years perfecting the recovery system that takes variability out of knee rehab so you can quickly get back to your life. Welcome to The Bee's Knees, a podcast full of articles, interviews, clinical studies, and advice about knee surgery, physical therapy, and life after knee surgery. Welcome to The Bee's Knees. I have a terrific interview today for you with Lois Martano from Staten Island. Lois has gone through a little bit of difficulty with a recovery after a total knee replacement in that she didn't do well. She needed uh, a manipulation under anesthesia, an MUA, as they call them. And that means that she had to go under uh, anesthesia and have the surgeon bend her knee for her and get through that scar tissue, basically rip the scar tissue so that her knee can bend freely. After that, she gets to go back to therapy and then get it right the second time. It's kind of a reset to um, recovery. Happens, you know, four, six, eight, ten weeks post-surgery. There's a certain time limit on that, meaning if you wait too long, the surgeon will say, I can't do a manipulation under anesthesia because it might do some damage to the knee area, the knee capsule, the tendons, and then you're into a different category. Then it's maybe arthroscopy and MUA, and, you know, it's a more complicated. So you really want to get your recovery done properly and avoid this procedure. In Lois's case, she couldn't. So she went in and had a problem in the manipulation. I want to point out that this is relatively rare. This isn't a common occurrence, but as you'll hear from Lois's comments in our interview, a brief interview, kind of a part one interview of two parts, because we'll speak with Lois again after her final recovery, um, bad things happen in the manipulation, and we ended up uh, with trouble. And I'll let uh, our conversation speak for itself. So without any more comment, this is a, an interview that I did, PJ Ewing from The Bee's Knees with Lois Martano, all about her manipulation and complications afterwards. Enjoy it. All right, we're starting. Alrighty. Lois, are you ready? Are you nervous? I am not ready. You. You're not nervous, No, though. no nerves. No That's nerves. not you. That's, I know you well enough, sort of. Uh, this is PJ, and we are um, doing an interview for the Bees Knees podcast, and we're both just miles away from each other. Uh, I'm in Lower Manhattan, PJ Ewing, that's me, the host of the Bees Knees podcast, and Lois is on Staten Island, right, Lois? Yeah, pretty close to you, actually. Yeah, amazing. Uh, and Lois and I met a week and a half ago or so. Lois uh, was going to use the X10 for a recovery from a manipulation under anesthesia, uh, but things went a little sideways. And so um, this is not really Sideways about... is the very exact word. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and we'll go into that. Uh, but what we have today is a, a lady who is in the middle of recovery, or, well, she's actually in the middle of a whole recovery story. And I'll let her tell the, the, full, the full tale. But uh, it's an unfinished story. Let me leave it with that. It's an unfinished story. And we're going to have the first part of this unfinished story. And then within the next month or two, we will have the second part. What happened? How did we resolve this problem? And they will be companion interviews, let's call them. Um, so before I get into in, any Q&A with you, Lois, why don't you just uh, kind of do that, you know, tell us, about your, tell us about yourself, tell us about your background kind of thing. Um, okay, well, um, I am a retired NYPD detective. I, previous to that, was uh, a full-time musician, but throughout my entire life, I've always been very physically active. I've played a number of sports, um, I've studied karate, I've always gone to the gym, you know, so um, my body has been used, <laughs> so to speak, and, uh, you know, it catches up after a while. So um, I had suffered a really bad knee injury while I was on the job. And uh, then once I retired, I ended up having to have knee replacement surgery on my right knee, which went beautifully. Everything according to plan. 
um, I was back to work at my civilian job uh, within 10 weeks of surgery. It was, you know, amazing. So, um, like I said, it catches up. And uh, six years later, it was time to do the left one. It was at that point where, like I said, continually a physically active person. Um, I coached elementary school and middle school basketball. And uh, once I fell down twice, I said, okay, we have to do this. So I went and had my left knee, total knee replacement. Um, I had it at NYU Hospital Joint Disease where I had the first one done. And for some reason, I developed a tremendous amount of scar tissue right around the patella and below the patella, wrapping itself all around the tendon, and um, which was prohibiting my flexion. And I couldn't get past 70 degrees. And that's biting my tongue. You know, 65 was really, you know, pushing it. And 70 was, oh, my God, I'm going to die. So... Um, I was trying to find all these different ways of, you know, improving my flexion. I had a tremendous physical therapy coach who was also helping me try and look and find ways to, to get around this. And um, I stumbled across the X10. And um, I started to read the video blogs that people had put up and uh, interviews and just written information that you guys have on the website. And uh, I noticed a lot of these people that were using the X10 had already gotten to the 90% flexion, 90 degree flexion point. And I said, well, you know, I'm not there yet. So maybe I have to speak with my surgeon first and um, do that horrible manipulation under anesthesia. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I had to do it. I had to. At that point, it was really... Um, I could have waited another two weeks, but it, it's not like that would have made all that much of a difference. So I said, all right, you know, I'm going to do it, and then I'm going to get on to the X10 and really, you know, full force work with my therapist, work with the X10 and either Todd or PJ and get going and, and be on that exercise bike once again. Um, however sideways is the exact word during the manipulation I suffered a 90% tear of my patella tendon um, right where it connects at the top of the tibia mm -hmm. and um, that you know we realized he, the doctor said alright let's get an MRI right after the manipulation I did get 120 flexion in the manipulation um, <laughs> which was great <laughs> um, but you know, we did an MRI, and, and that was the result. And he said, okay, surgery immediately. You know, we're not going to let this linger because that could be disastrous. So the very next day, you know, I stayed overnight in the hospital. The very next day, we did the surgery. And I am currently in a fiberglass 11-pound cast <laughs> from mm -hmm. my thigh to my ankle. Um, that is probably the most annoying physical, just, just, you know, like situation I've ever been in because I can't sleep any other way except on my back because this cast is so huge you can't turn on your side. Um, I can't bend my knee at all. That's the whole idea of the cast because the tendon has to heal. Um, I can't shower. They don't suggest, not even with the whole plastic bag around your leg thing, <laughs> that's out of the question. So it's a lot of that, you know, every day washing up and then going over to the kitchen sink and washing my hair there, which women know we hate to do. <laughs> we yeah. like to shower. But, um, you know, I, I mean, it's, uh, I'm not going to lie, it's a little depressing because now I feel like I have to start all over again. Um, it's completely out of my hands. It's a chance you take with manipulation. You know, uh, I didn't go in in the dark with this. My surgeon gave me the, you know, he says, listen, we could break a tibia. We could hurt a tendon. We could break a leg. It's, just, it's, it's not like it's an easy thing. The manipulation is a, a quite a violent little struggle there for all of five to ten minutes tops in the operating room. And I said, well, go for it. You know, I, I 
healthy, uh, I'm strong, and it happened anyway. So what uh, what what did you learn about uh, if if anything about the act of tearing that that tendon, patella tendon? Was there any description at all about well, I felt it was okay, and then. It just happened, or, or, or did you not get any detail like that? I didn't. Well, you know what it was? Um, like after when I woke up in the recovery room, um, you know, I I was able to bend my knee. And uh, it, oh, what a relief it was mm-hmm. <laughs> from not being able to bend it. And then all of a sudden being able to bend it, it was like a big ah. Oh. And, um, and then to find out, no, we have to have surgery and you can't bend it at all. It's like, no, but the next day prior to surgery, we did bend it again, and usually, you know, you could start to tighten up after the manipulation sometimes and and lose some of that, and I didn't. I didn't. I was able to go all the way back again. So this is the day after surgery, post-surgery. This is is right prior to surgery. Oh, prior to surgery. But the the day after the manipulation, you know, so I I hadn't lost anything. Sorry, sorry, Which sorry. Was, I'm getting my timeline off. Prior to the surgery, post MUA, I got it. The in between time. Yeah. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I yeah. get it. That little twilight time, I guess. Right. You know. But got um it. you know, I I did learn that uh it can be repaired. You know, um it wasn't a complete tear, although ninety percent is pretty darn close. Um, he did explain to me uh, the procedure that he was going to use, which is subsequently what he did use. Um, I don't know if you want those details. Sure, yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, what they do is, um, you know, I was listening to all their stuff in the operating room as well. You know, oh, well, he needs a two-fifths of a millimeter screw for this and, and that drill bit. And it sounded like they were ready to fix a table leg and not my leg. But... Um, pretty much all the same tools, you know. Um, They drill a couple of holes into your patella. Uh, Then they attach the broken part of the tendon back to the uh, other broken part of the tendon. They put it all together there. And they drill the holes and screw it in, and then they put um, wire through the holes underneath, pull it, and then they bring it up around and tie it on top almost like a sailor's knot. And uh, voila, that's how you have to heal. And are you expecting the wires to stay there? Did they describe that that's probably a permanent addition to it? Yeah, that's, it's probably a permanent thing, um, although I shouldn't really lose anything. You know, I, I mean, my, my tendon, uh, it wasn't in bad shape. Um, he didn't expect it to shrink uh, I shouldn't have any, you know, big residual, uh, you know, difficulties with this. Like an athlete, it's going to be something that will be on your mind for a little while at least. Oh, oh definitely, definitely. Yeah. yeah, I mean, the same thing happened with the right knee. Even though everything was fine, you know, I, I did for, I'd say, about a year. I did have that in the back of my head. Mm-hmm. Every time I was on the court with the kids, don't run, <laughs> you know, don't pound on it, don't twist, you know, that, but then eventually it goes away because you realize, all right, look, it's okay. Right, right. Um, and so you are now straight-legged, and that's completely annoying and disruptive. Yes. <laughs> I get it. Um, and that is, to me, not being a, you know, a doctor but, uh, or a PT, but someone who's you know, in the business, I guess, um, it is uh, an opportunity for you to walk, get that cast off in three, four, five weeks. But yeah, you've we're, been uh, straight for a long time, right? So right. It's, we're it's, aiming for um, March 7th is my doctor's appointment. Right, right. Which is, uh, you know, whatever, it's a couple... 16 more days. 16 more days, yeah. Oh, you know, I'm counting. (laughs) Yeah, right. Um, And then, then, so that isn't, truthfully, that isn't that long. I was kind of headed down the path of scar tissue could be um, in the works right now, but that's not that long. If it does turn out to be 16 to 20 days or so, you know, all is not lost because the body is... I will have to go into a brace after that. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. it's you know it's it's something I can remove because obviously I will have to for physical therapy. Right. Um, 
But as so what, what, the swelling the, what has gone down do? in my leg, my yeah. cast has gotten looser. Ah. You know, so I can I can move around a little bit in there. And yeah. um, I can tighten. I could do those those quad exercises, mm-hmm. you know, where I do all the ankle pumps and everything, so there's right. no swelling there or anything. But now I can actually feel my, my quad, and I can do those strengthening exercises. Like tightening your quad. Yeah, like quad exactly. Yeah. So I'm kind of getting a jump on that. That's great. Because That's now great. I have that room. Right. And then you're just going to have to baby it a little bit, but there'll be a moment where he says, so, so the plan is um, get the brace and not the, the full cast and then be able to gently start some, some PT, obviously exactly. without going too being too aggressive because you're, you know, you, you can't, you've got that the hardware in there. And, and it, yeah, it's still going to, still going to have to heal. There'll still be some healing time. Yeah. But I can do things like start to get my, my quad back and my uh, my calf muscle back. Right. Um, I'm allowed to walk on it. It was, uh, I was told weight bearing, you know, as uh, as tolerated. And I got rid of the crutches when I came home the next day because mm-hmm. really I'm, that's just me. And um, I had the cane for about two days. And I said, no, that's it. If I could walk on it, I'm going to. So... I'm only in the house, but I'm walking around, and yeah. I'm going up and down the stairs, hanging onto the banister. I do feel that if I went outside, I would take the cane, mm-hmm. you know, for mm-hmm. that extra. Yeah. But um, and you've got a lot of stairs in the front and of no your house too. That. Uh, yeah, that's good that it's weight bearing. You've got a lot of stairs on the front of that house too to come down, and you've got to be mindful yeah, of uh, hurting yourself. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well. Um, so- you know, three-story house, so it yeah. <laughs> stands all right. over the place. Right, right, exactly. Uh, okay, so so the prognosis is, you know, relatively soon, get the into the brace, uh, out of the cast, you then yeah. do some mild yeah. PT, and sort of work your way gently back to, and hopefully knowing that flexion was the problem, right. that's why you got into this mess, you know, at 70 degrees. Exactly, I was, I was totally straight. <laughs> right. Right, that's I, not I was the four degrees. I was four degrees from zero, okay. you okay. know, on extension. So that wasn't the issue. So it's going to be you're going to be back to that that question, right? We don't know, right? You know, right. bending down to thirty, forty, fifty, sixty. But are we going? Are you going to see another problem? Or, encouragingly, did that one hundred and twenty degrees pave the way without the creation of new scar tissue over the last three weeks, right? Are we, are you able to sort of take advantage of that manipulation? Finally, uh, it's, it just, nobody knows. I guess, right. right that's, now. that's the big question mark right yeah. now. Yeah. And the X10 would play a role if you ended up getting oh. stuck oh, somewhere I would, in there. Without a doubt. Yeah. Without a doubt. That's a phenomenal machine. Absolutely phenomenal. Yeah, you had a brief exp- – I mean, you, you just had it – what happened was you had it a few days before the MUA. Yeah, just it, just, it turned out that it was it. convenient for you guys to drop it off to me a couple of days before the manipulation. And, um, you know, Todd walked me through the whole thing. We did a whole session, and uh, only those four days, I, I was – I went from 61 when he was here. I finished up the night before manipulation at a 73, and um, – you know, I mean, mm-hmm. I, I had no doubt that if I had been the person that started on that machine at 90, I would have been, you know, at the 120 within two weeks' time without blinking an eye. I think it's a phenomenal yeah. machine. I really do. Well, that's good to hear, and you may end up back on that thing. Yeah, we'll you know, see. I mean, if if I have to, I I wouldn't hesitate. Yeah. I would not you know, it's hesitate. funny, that machine that, that you uh, had – that you know you don't need right now for a while yeah. um, ended up going out to Long Island to a gentleman named Kevin and Kevin was in the high 70s when he you know last you know started on the machine that first session he's yeah. now at 112 I saw yeah, see, this it, morning it's, <laughs> yeah it's absolutely it tremendous it really is it, you know if you don't have that scar tissue that's that was the uh, that was the killer it was like mm-hmm. a rock yeah 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 well, that's, that's great. I mean, this is part one of a two-part series, so I, I wanted to capture sort of fresh what's going on with you. Um, all of our sympathies, of course, to you having the <laughs> manipulation you. and then having this problem. And, you know, uh, but uh, I liked you the first time I spoke with you on the phone, and meeting you in person was also great. And 
I, I'm glad, you know, we, again, us as the audience members, we don't know how this re it resolves itself. We know you're going to get there. I know you're going to get there and you're going to be happy. Just the path and, and how long it takes is going to be the question. What I wanted to capture was not to scare everybody away from manipulations under anesthesia oh, no, at all. Oh, no, no. This is, you know. this is not, um, you know, a, a patella tear or a, a, a tibia break. I mean, that's not the usual. No. You know, that's a very, very small percentage. Yes. It really is. Yeah. You know, so don't be afraid. <laughs> no, that's right. And manipulations can be the way to get well uh, yeah. for many. Um, it's, it, you know, it's, it's just one of those things. It's got a... Uh, uh, good and bad and, you know, a few implications when it doesn't go well. So, um, all right, well, then, then let's call, call that a conversation. Okay. And, you know, I'll promise you and I will just promise everybody that we'll be back on the Bees Knees podcast within the next, um, well, four to eight weeks with uh, sort of the end of the story, the other half of this. The program. other half, right. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot, Lois. Okay, no problem. I'm Dr. Justin Trosclair, host of two-time Podcast Awards nominated A Doctor's Perspective podcast. I interview doctors in and out of my profession about their specialties and the occasional non-doctor special guests. But we also go behind the curtain and see what's working for their marketing, overcoming struggles, practical knowledge, book choices, and relationship advice. Join me on any podcast app on your phone or visit adoctorsperspective.net for the show notes pages and free resources. I want you to have an abundant home life as well as a thriving practice. So come on, take a listen. To learn more, visit x10therapy.com, 1-855-910-5633. Just a reminder, it's a huge help if you subscribe to, rate, and review our podcast. It helps people find us. X10, back to full strength.